Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and today we're going to look at five shots that you must learn and that's right, you heard me correct, five shots. So these shots are very, very useful. Some of them are safety shots, some of them are clever little things that you can use in frames, but they're very useful. So let's get into the video and look at these shots. Now this first shot is quite interesting. This is something that not a lot of players actually think about. So you can see that I've got the white here. There's a plant that goes to the corner and you can see that those two reds are touching each other. Now that's important because that means that when the white hits those reds, it's actually hitting an object that weighs more than the white ball does. So if you imagine we used backspin on this shot, if I've just got a single red there, when the white hits that red, it's hitting an object that weighs exactly the same as the white. But in this situation, we've got two reds touching each other, which increases the weight of the object that the white is going to hit. So it weighs a lot more than the white does. And that means that for the same amount of backspin, we'll actually get more reaction out of the white. Now the easy and exaggerated way to think about that is if I hit the white against a brick wall, obviously that wall weighs a lot more than the white does and the white will just bounce off. We're getting a similar effect here with the red balls weighing more than the white does and that's going to help us to generate extra spin. So let's play one of these shots. So let's try and get some spin on. And you can see, can you see how easily I've managed to get the white to screw all the way back up the table? So that's an interesting effect that's going on with the white ball. And the reason it's important is sometimes, even amongst the professional players, they will play a plant and they will actually over screw the white because they haven't really thought about the fact that the plant is going to weigh heavier than the cue ball and that's what makes the white bounce off further and you get more of a reaction than you would expect. Now, I'm just going to play this shot with a single red here and I'm going to try and generate as much screw back as I possibly can. And you'll see here that even though I go nice and low on the white, still try the same shot, I won't get the same reaction out the cue ball. So I got a pretty decent screw shot there. I got hold of the white nicely. It's a bit of distance between the white and red but you can see that because the red weighs the same as the white, I just did not get the same reaction from the cue ball. Now, this is always an interesting shot. You can see here that I haven't got the angle to get through to hit the correct contact point to pop this red. So what I can actually do is I can play right hand side on the cue ball here, and that will help turn the red over, we call it. And what is actually happening there is because the white ball is spinning with the side spin, when it hits the object ball, it will throw the object ball a little bit to the left. And that's what will make us manage to create the potting angle here. So let's have a go at that. So you can see I wouldn't be able to pot this red. But if I play this shot with right hand side, try and hit the red almost full ball. And can you see the way I've managed to pot the red right in the middle of the pocket by putting that side spin on it, kicks the red so I've put right hand side on it, kicks the red a little bit to the left, and that's helped me to turn the ball over and generate that potting angle that we needed. Now this third shot is another interesting one here. So my opponent has left me a red right over the corner pocket like that, but they've also got an excellent cue ball. So the cue ball is tight on the bulk cushion here. And that means that if I play to pot this red, so I can only hit the top of the white, that's all I can really do. If I play to pot the red, there's a good chance that I'll either catch the white in the jaws like I just have done there, or there's also the danger that I could actually follow the white into the pocket. So the much more beneficial thing to do here is to actually play to hit the cushion first with the white and flick the red in and then hopefully leave a shot on the black. So let's try that. So make sure you chalk your cue when you've got these shots. It is difficult anyway because it's tight on the cushion. Lift my cue up slightly to just cue down on the white slightly to hit the bigger part of the white and then just the cushion first and that time the white has flicked out I've got the white right away from the pocket and I've got a lovely shot on the black so an interesting shot there to think about whenever you've got balls very close to the pocket and it's hard to control the white ball just think about using the cushion first and you can flick the ball in and have much more control over where the white ball goes now shot number four is incredibly useful when we're playing out of snookers. So you can see the scenario I've got here. My white is snookered behind the brown. The red is right in the middle of the table and I need to try and hit this red. Now the shot involves using screw to change the angle that the white comes off a cushion. So 
All I can do here, obviously very difficult to go this way because the green is in the way, I can hit just before the middle pocket here with the white. So let's try that. So obviously I can't hit any further up this cushion, the yellow is in the way. So if I hit further up this cushion, so I'm trying to avoid catching the bump of the middle pocket and just hit plain ball on that point of the cushion. And we can see that the white has gone off too wide. It's not gonna hit the red. Now what we can do is we can hit this same point on the cushion, but play screw back on the white. So you hit the shot a bit harder, play screw on the white, and then instead of the white coming off wider, it makes it come off a lot squarer. It checks the angle up, even without using a side spin, and it's gonna go much closer to hitting that red. So, very good thing to know that's happening when you're playing out of snooker. So let's try that. So I've got the same position, but this time I'm gonna screw into the cushion. And you can see that time, I've managed to hit the red. Been a bit unlucky there that the red has gone over the pocket. But even if your opponent was in a position there where they're playing for snookers because they need to try and get snookers to win the frame, you've made sure you've hit the ball on. So very interesting thing that you know is happening that when you screw into a cushion and you hit the ball harder like that, it will actually distort the angle that the white comes off and it comes off a lot squarer. The other important thing to know about that is that sometimes I see players when they in some snooker situations, they're getting a bit frustrated because their opponent has, has got them in a tricky position. It's important to not hit the ball too hard and start losing a bit of composure on the shot because that effect can be happening. And then even though you might be hitting the correct point on the cushion to actually hit the ball, you're changing the angle by playing it a lot harder and possibly screwing into the cushion and changing the angle that the ball comes off. Right, so for our last tip in this video, we're gonna look at safety again. So I've got the white up here in bulk and I've got a red very close to the top cushion there. Now what you'll often see the pros do in this situation is they'll actually hit the cushion first and try and kick the red up the table. Now that's good because it's gonna put a lot of distance between the white and red, leave the white up here in the top end of the table and hopefully the red up here. Now to do that, I wanna hit the cushion first. So I'm aiming to the left of the red and then I want to use bottom and right hand side. The bottom and right will really get the white ball spinning with that side. And then I should hopefully kick the red nicely up the table. So I've got a good contact there. The white has stayed right up the top end of the table there. I've got an excellent red there. It's come right back up into bulk. That's put a nice big distance between the two balls. So something to bear in mind there, when you've got balls that are just off the cushion, you've got that little bit of a gap you can come cushion first, use a little bit of side to kick the white into the red, kick the red up the table and put distance between the two balls. So as always, everybody, I really hope you found this video useful. Like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. For anyone that's interested in any personal one-to-one -one coaching sessions, I'm working on this very table all the time, helping players to improve their game. All my details are in the description box below. So if you have a look there, contact me and I'd love to help you with your game. As always, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for next week's video. Cheers.